So far, we've spent uh, the majority of our time talking about uh, things that have one variable. And when we have talked about two variables, it's been when we've had an expression and we just plug in the two values that they give us. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we solve an equation that has two unknowns or, or two things that we don't know. How do we, how do we solve that? How do we come up with solutions for that? So to do that, we're going to start with a little uh, something to think about here, something to, to kind of brainstorm. It says with your partner, but um, on your own, go ahead and pause the video. I want you to try and come up with an equation for this uh, and then see if you can come up with what I come with. So go ahead and pause the video right now and then we'll, uh, we'll go through this and, and write an equation when, uh, when you come back. Okay, so the first thing you need to recognize is there are some keywords, some important things in this problem. Um, you see the word per there. That's been pretty important in the past. You also see $8 and $1. But really, w one of the really important things we need to do, first of all, is to identify what we don't know. Remember, those are always going to be our variables. So I, I think of two things that we don't know here. Obviously, we don't know what the cost is because otherwise they wouldn't ask how much would it cost. The other thing we don't know that will affect the cost is the number of letters we're ordering. In science, we call this the, uh, the independent variable. You get to decide how many letters you want. The cost depends on the number of letters. This is dependent and independent variables. I know you've talked about that before. Now, when we don't know something in algebra, we give it a letter. So cost, I'm going to call C. And the number of letters, that independent variable that you get to decide on, is going to be called X. Now, in the problem, Cost is determined by two things. There's eight dollars that you pay no matter what. You're just to buy the materials. So that's going to be, we're just going to write that. But we're going to add an additional cost for each letter that we buy. So that's one dollar per letter. Uh, we, don't, we don't know letters, so that's just one times x. Or you could rewrite this a little bit more easily. C equals eight plus x. Now there could be lots of different things here. There's, you could, there's an unlimited number of numbers of letters that you could pick. So um, we're going to come back to this here in a second. But let's talk about how we do come up with solutions for two variable equations. We have an equation here, y equals 3x plus 2. If you think about it, anything I plug in for x is going to get me a different value of y. So let's just, let me just show you how this works. Let's say we plug in 0 for x. I could plug in anything, but I'm going to choose 0. So when you're finding solutions for two variables, you're just going to pick a, pick a letter. X is the independent variable here. I'm going to plug it in, and then I'm going to work it out. Notice I'm showing each step of the work here, and I end up with when X is 0, Y is 2. So Y depends on X. Whatever you choose for X, Y is going to depend on that, independent, dependent variables. Now notice how this is different if I plug in a different value for X. Let's say I plug in 1. So now I'm going to do y equals 3 times 1 plus 2. I follow order of operations. And when, when x is 1, y is going to be 5. You notice here how I'm putting the x's and y's together. This should kind of start to look familiar to you. Um, we also can test uh, solutions. So let's take a look at this. I have three different uh, ordered pairs here. If you think you remember about ordered pairs is you have an x value and a y value. So a lot of times with equations, you see y's and x's. It refers to the x and y axis. So here I have 3, 11. I'm going to plug that in and see if those values work. So I plug in 11 for y and 3 for x. This is just like a check step, just like you did with single variable equations. Just do all the work, and we're going to see if the two sides are equal. And we notice that 11 does equal 11 here in the end, so yes, this is a solution. Notice we're not finding solutions here. Here we're testing to see whether or not the ordered pair I give you is a solution. All right, next we have 10, 3. So I'm going to plug in. Be careful here. Don't just plug in the first letter or the first number for the first variable. A lot of people make a mistake here and plug in uh, 10 where they see the y because it comes first. Uh, it's x coordinate, y coordinate. All right, see, this doesn't equal out, so this is not a solution. I'm going to write a little statement here that says that. All right, last one. 11, 43, you know, 43 gets plugged in for y, 11 gets plugged in for x. So I'll do 4 times 11 minus 1. And you could probably see pretty quickly here that this is, but 
but we do need to go all the way to the end, get a number equaling a number, this is a solution. So notice, there's multiple solutions here for y equals 4x minus 1. In fact, there's an infinite number of solutions. Anything I plug in for x will give me a different number for y. So how do I show all of the solutions? Well, you've heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. We're going to use a picture. That picture is called a graph. A graph, you see that we're going to underline a couple things here. A graph is the only way that you can show every solution. We're going to use a line just like we use lines with inequalities. Now that arrow shows that the, your solutions, everything on that line goes on and on forever in, in one direction. So um, what basically what we're going to do here, we're going to come up with different solutions. So here, uh, we skipped this on the front page. Go ahead and go back to the front. Each solution to a two-variable equation is written as an ordered pair. So for the banner problem, I could come up with a bunch of ordered pairs. I could list them out in a table and then graph them and connect the dots. We're going to do that with this y equals 3x plus 2. If you look up above here, um, we did that as our, our second example. I came up with 0, 2, and 1, 5 as ordered pairs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put those into, I'm going to copy that table of solutions right here. So a couple steps here. Whenever you want to graph an equation, in other words, show all of the solutions. Because uh, remember what that'll do. That's going to show you everything uh, that will work. What x values match with what y values. So 0, 2, I can plot that on the number line. I'm going to go over 0, up 2. Put the dot right there. Um, and then 1, 5. Notice, guys, a, a coordinate plane is nothing more than two number lines. You have a vertical number line, that's your y value, y cor the y, y number line, and then you have an x number line that's horizontal. You can see even works for negative, so I'm going to plug in negative one. I'm going to get a couple more solutions here. I'd say three is probably enough. We'll do four here, though. I get y equals negative one, so my ordered pair here is negative one, negative one. Let's plug in uh, 2. I could even plug in fractions here if you really wanted to. Er anything works. You can plug in any value for x. It's always going to get a different y value. So if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 3 times 2 plus 2. And that's going to give me uh, 6 plus 2, which is 8. So my ordered pair here is 2, 8. So I've got all my ordered pairs. I graph them on the coordinate plane. I'm going to put that dot there. And I'm going to get a, you need to get a straight edge. This needs to be a ruler. Um, and I'm going to draw a line straight through here. Anywhere my red pen touches or anywhere your pencil touches, anywhere there's a piece of graphite or ink or whatever, that is a solution. So in between these dots, there are solutions. I put arrows on the end because there are solutions even further past these last dots that I did. So you definitely need to make sure you have those arrows on it. Um, but you'll notice this, this line, this graph, represents all of the solutions for this equation, y equals 3x plus 2. Anything I pull from that line, anything I plug in for x, will give me a different value for y. Right, so you have a different couple, a couple problems to try here, uh, a couple of these to graph. Um, you're going to have a couple of these to test. You're going to come up with some solutions. So you're going to practice some of the things you used in this video. Good luck.